name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we thank you so much for joining us our prayer is is that you've enjoyed our praise and worship ministry here at the House of Refuge Church uh, we are blessed beyond measure to have such wonderful 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 individuals who lead our praise and worship and we thank God for you joining us today we're going to dive into the Word of God and hear what God has to share with us on today again uh, we pray that uh, during this time of worship that something is going to be done or said that's going to bless your life in a major way. Let's have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We bless you for another day. We thank you, Lord God, because 
you've kept us. You've blessed us to see this day that was not promised to us. God, we pray now that as we dive into study of your word, to share, Lord God, with us those things that will make our lives better. We pray, Lord God, that you will speak to every place in our lives, that, Lord God, we need your word to reach. We pray, Lord God, that not only that you would reach us, but then, Lord God, teach us how to walk worthy of the calling and what you've given us. We pray, Lord God, that you would speak through us and speak to us, that, Lord God, we may be better than we came. In Jesus' name, amen. want to go to Mark chapter 5 and verse 25 and following. Again, Mark chapter 5, verse 25 and following. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Let's hear what the Lord has to say to us on today. It reads on this wise, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. That's enough this morning. I want to talk to you from this thought, I've had enough. Again, I've had enough. Have you ever heard those words or said those words yourself as it relates to life and what it has to offer us? It is said so many times that trouble knows our address, that trouble will find us in this life that we live, that it's not all about sunshine and happy days, but there are some rainy days and some days that are filled with conflict and trouble. One preacher said it like this, trouble knows your address and it comes with a suitcase, which means that it comes to stay a while. I'm reminded though in the midst of the fact that trouble comes, that David says weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. It's interesting that life sometimes gives us stuff that we cannot handle on our own. I've learned that that life sometimes will give you things that will cause you to scratch your head, cause you to stay up at night, cause you to wonder if you're doing what God has called you to do, cause you to wonder whether or not God even loves you, cause you to wonder whether or not the prayers that you pray, are they reaching God or are they just reverberating off of the walls in my bedroom? to cause you to wonder, is there ever going to be a time where I'm going to be able to sleep at night? For many are left with tossing and turning all night long, concerned about what the next day may bring. Well, this text is tailored to teach us that when you have had enough, there ought to be some things uh, that you do. This woman in this text shares with us some things that ought to happen in our lives if we're going to become what God has called us to become. And not only that, but we're going to handle the things that come our way. It's an interesting passage of scripture written by Mark. Mark writes chapter 5, and when Mark writes chapter 5, uh, it's interesting how it opens up. It opens up with Jesus coming over the sea of the Gadareans. And when Jesus come over the sea of the Gadareans, he meets a man that has his living in the graveyard. This man, they say, is a lunatic. And this man is cutting himself with stone. And as you study this particular text, uh, theologians say that one of the reasons he was cutting himself with stone is because he was trying to get out of him what was tormenting him on the inside. But look at this. It happens when Jesus comes to this man who nobody can tame. He's running up and down from the graveyard up to the mountain and he's cutting himself with stone and they're trying to bind him and nobody can bind him. But when Jesus comes, he runs and falls down at the feet of Jesus and acknowledges who he is. And this text is interesting because uh, no matter what you're dealing with, it all is submissive to the power of Jesus Christ. 
But not only that, that beginning of the text shares that with us, but the end of the text shares with us about Jairus' daughter. And she is sick and Jairus comes to Jesus and wants Jesus to go to his house to heal his daughter. Jesus obliges him and says, okay, I'll come to your house and I'll heal your daughter. But when Jesus is on his way to the house, he is interrupted by this woman with the issue of blood. Here's the text. The setting is great. Here, people are surrounding Jesus trying to get something from him. There's a crowd around him and everybody is uh, pushing up against him trying uh, to get a piece of the master. But I want to tell you this woman does something uh, that uh, uh, shares with us today that no matter how tired we are and no matter how fed up we are with life, uh, that God can give us a brand new start. It's interesting because I want to share with you uh, three simple things uh, to help you when you've had enough. The first thing is you know you've had enough when you're exhausted with where you are. I think I'll say that again. Uh, you, you know you've had enough when you are exhausted uh, with where you are. Let's be real about it. Uh, many of us in this life, we are exhausted, not because of where we want to be, but because of where we are. I said, we have situations and circumstances in our life uh, that somehow dim our hopes and our dreams uh, for the future. We have situations in our lives uh, uh, that uh, it happens on this wise, that if it isn't one thing, it's another. It happens when we have to deal with physical ailments. We have to deal with mental ailments. We have to deal with spiritual ailments. It's, it's just uh, one thing after another. And, and in life, sometimes uh, uh, you have to be exhausted with where you are before you can do something better. I, I, I think I need to tell you this, that sometimes you got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sometimes you got to get fed up with what's going on in your life. Sometimes uh, you have to look around you and say, I'm tired of this. I'm not going through this anymore. I'm ready for something better in my life. I am exhausted uh, with the way my life is going. That's what happened to this woman. The Bible says uh, that she had an issue of blood uh, for 12 years. And she had suffered many things of many physicians and was nothing better but grew worse. Again, she had this issue for 12 long years. She was exhausted with where she was, but she, she kept trying different avenues and ways of fixing her problem, but none of those would work. And I want to tell somebody here, if you tried everything, you ought to try Jesus because Jesus is the one that can fix anything. Jesus is the one that can make the way out of no way. Jesus is the one that can pick you up when you're down. And so this woman had exhausted all of her measures. She had spent all of her money trying to get well. And can I tell you something? It's tough when you go to the doctor and you're expecting the doctor to help you, but the doctor cannot help you. It's tough when you spend money on portion potions and different things of that nature trying to get better, but it seems like apple cider vinegar won't work. It's, it's amazing because she is in this situation for 12 years. And I'm telling you, she got sick and tired of where she was and said there's got to be something else. And I want to tell you, uh, in 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, Elijah is one who got uh, exhausted uh, with where he was. It's interesting, Elijah in chapter 18 uh, of First Kings had defeated wicked King Ahab, had spilt an altar and called fire down from heaven. And he had this great success in his life, but goes into chapter 19 because he hears that uh, Jezebel is going to kill him. And when he gets into chapter 19, the Bible says he sits down up under a juniper tree. 
And when he sits down up under that juniper tree, life has crashed down on him. He feels like there's no hope at all. And the Bible records that Elijah says, enough is enough. He says, Lord, take away my life. And I want to tell you something. Elijah was at the end of the road. Elijah was ready to throw in the towel. But somehow, someway, God knows where we are and God knows what we need. The Bible says that an angel came and told Elijah it's going to be all right. And I want to tell somebody out there who may be watching this morning that it's going to be all right. No matter how rough it is, no matter how tough it is, it's going to be all right. I know you're exhausted. I know you've tried to do everything you possibly could to, to make things work. And it seems like instead of things getting better, they are getting worse. But I want to tell you something. Uh, God can turn that situation around. God can make that situation work out for you. Can I help you with a little scripture? Uh, Romans chapter 8 says, All things work together for the good of them uh, that love the Lord and those that are called according to his purpose. And I want to throw this in. This is just a little bit. I want to put in the gumbo while I'm up here cooking. Uh, I want to tell you that sometimes uh, God has to break us in order to make us. God has to allow us to get into situations where nothing that we have work. And we have to understand uh, that our extremity is God's opportunity. I, I, I think I'll say that one more time. When you've gone the last mile of the way, that's when God will step in and make a way out of no way. H here it is. I want to share with you that uh, she, she was exhausted with where she was. She was exhausted with where she was. Twelve long years. I, I, I want to share this with you. I was watching uh, YouTube the other day and I heard a sermon by Pastor John Adolph, pastor of the Antioch Baptist Church in Beaumont, Texas. And Pastor Adolph was talking about this particular passage. And Pastor Adolph said he looked all through every commentary and Bible that he had, trying to figure out why God waited 12 years uh, to heal this woman. And he finally discovered that God did not wait 12 years to heal the woman. God waited until she exhausted all of her resources so that he could step in right on time. I want to tell you, you know you've had enough when you are exhausted with where you are. But not only that, let me share something else with you. You know you've had enough when you're determined to start something. I, I'll say it again. I, I know. I'm going to explain it to you. You know you've had enough when you are determined to start something. Look, look at what happens in the text. The Bible says, and she had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Verse number 27, when she heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. Let, let me share with you, uh, when you determine to start something, let, let me ask you like this. Have you ever had God do something in your life that you know it was nobody but him? H have you ever had God uh, open a door in your life uh, and you walk through it unscathed, uh, knowing that it was nobody but the Lord. I, I've had situations like, like that in my life. And here, this woman has a similar situation. This woman is here and she says that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Antiquity teaches when you do a study on the text, it shares with us that uh, men wore these outer robes that had tassels on the bottom. And she said, I don't have to grab the whole robe if I could just touch one of the tassels. She said, I know it'll start something in my life. Here it is. The, the, I want to share with you the Greek word touch is hop to, hop to. Uh, it means to ignite something or to start something. It means to ignite something or to start something. 
That's what happened in this woman's life. When she touched the hem of his garment, it ignited healing on the inside of her. It ignited something in her life. I, I want to share with somebody out there that if it seems like life is dead, it seems like nothing is working out for you, why don't you jumpstart your life by touching the hem of Jesus' garment? Why don't you jumpstart your life uh, by inviting Christ into your life? I want to tell you it's the best thing that ever happened to me. It's the best thing that I've ever done. And I want to share with somebody out there that, that's watching today that if you need a jumpstart in your life, Jesus is the one to give it to you. If you need to get out of that bad place that you're in and it seems like you can't get going, Jesus can jumpstart your life. Just one touch from the Lord can change anything in your life. She jump-started her life. And I want to tell you, you have to be determined to start something. You have to be determined to say, I'm not going to sit here in, and feel sorry for myself, but I'm going to get up and I'm going to push on. I like what Grandma Nim said, believe I run on. See what the end's going to be. And I want to tell somebody, you, you, you know you've had enough when you're determined to jumpstart your life. It's interesting because God always gives us a boost. God always gives us power. God always gives us what we need to do what he's called us to do. It's there, Acts chapter 1, the Bible says, and ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Let me share something with you. Here it was. Jesus uh, had left his disciples on earth to start the ministry that we now embrace. And I want to tell you something. It wasn't easy. Uh, disciples were being beheaded. They were being killed. They were being uh, uh, shipped off. But I want to tell you something. They had uh, a jump start from the Lord. They had power from the Lord. And when they had power, when it got bad in their life, they said, I'm not going to sit here and wallow in my pain and my sorrow, but I'm going to jumpstart my life. I'm going to keep on pushing. I'm going to keep on running. Let me just give this word to somebody who's watching right now. Uh, God wants me to tell you, get up from where you are and jumpstart your life. Start your prayer life over again. Start studying your Bible again. Start calling people who don't want to gossip but want to encourage you in the word of God. Start surrounding yourself with people who will push you and help you jumpstart your life. Here it is. I want to tell you, uh, when I was coming up as a young boy, a young man rather, around 20, 22 years old, I had uh, a two-door um, Honda Accord. It was a five-speed. This car um, would keep running uh, and rev up at the light. When I would get to the light, stop, put my foot on the clutch and brake, the car would just sit there and go, vroom, vroom, vroom. And uh, that was all fine because all I had to do was pull off and it would just keep on going. But it got so bad that it would stop on me. And when I would try to crank it, it would not crank. It was the strangest thing. Car would not crank, wouldn't crank at all. And so I remembered something I saw my daddy doing. My daddy showed me this trick that if the car is rolling and you jump off of the clutch, the car will start up. And so there was a time when I was at the light and I was at a hill came to the hill going down, stopped, and the car cut off on me. And I didn't worry about anything. If I was going uphill, I would have been in trouble. But I was going downhill, so I had momentum behind me. And when the light turned, I just let off the brake, let the car roll down the hill, and jumped off the clutch, and the car started right up. And I want to tell somebody... <laughs> that that's the way Jesus does us. It seems like uh, everything uh, is not working. But if you allow Jesus to give you a push in the right direction and you are willing 
to hold on to his unchanging hands. I'm a living witness that God will work it out for your good. Here it is. I want to tell you, uh, you know you've had enough when you are determined to start something. You know you've had enough when you are willing to take no for an answer. I know. Stay with me. You know you've had enough when you are willing to take no for an answer. Here it is. The Bible says this woman had spent all that she had. Nothing better, grew worse. She came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And the Bible says that the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. <laughs> I love this. Bible is just so exciting to me. Uh, you know you've had enough when you are willing to accept no as the answer. The Bible says, and she felt in her body that she was made whole of that plague. When you study the text, the word felt is ode. And the word felt in the Greek means to know. Here it is. You know you've had enough when you are willing to accept what you know as the answer. Are y'all still with me here? No, no. She, when you are willing to accept what you know, she knew within herself. Didn't look any different on the outside, but it was what she knew on the inside that made her say, I know there's been a change in my life. And can I help somebody who's listening this morning? I want to share with you that you got to go with what you know. You got to be willing to accept no as the answer. You got to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You got to know that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think according to the power that worketh on the inside of us. Here it is. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says all things work together for the good of them that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. And I want to share with you, you've got to know that God has a purpose for your life. You've got to know that God has not intended for you not to have life and that life more abundantly. You've got to know that God has greater in store for you. I want to tell you that same particular chapter, verse number 31 says, if God be for us. He's more than the whole world against us. And you got to know that God is on your side. I think I'll say that one more time. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, you've got to know that God is on your side. Here it is. Let me share with you what happened. Um, I believe it was the year 1996. Uh, it was the NBA draft. It was held in East Rutherford, uh, New Jersey. And as they were having the draft, all of... Um, the, uh, the GMs or general managers were there and they were getting ready to make their selections. And uh, this selection was important because uh, there were several players who were really good in this draft. And uh, Jerry West was the general manager of the Los Angeles Lakers. And Jerry West <clears throat> talks about this day in particular. He says that he was thinking about drafting somebody else. He says he didn't, wasn't sure uh, about the individual that he drafted, but he was thinking about drafting somebody else. There were others in that draft like uh, Jerry Kittle, St Stephon Marbury, Steve Nash, Tony Delk, Ray Allen. They all were in that draft. It was littered with all kind of talent. And Jerry West said he went with his gut feeling. He said he had all of these guys that he could have picked, but he went with his gut feel. He went with what he felt on the inside. And he said that what's on the inside uh, has been working for him all of his life. 
And he said he's going to go with his gut. He's going to go for what he knows. And here it is. When the draft came, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers and Jerry West selected one person by the name of Kobe Bean Bryant. And Kobe Bean Bryant then uh, all of a sudden turned into a five-time uh, world champion and one of the best players to ever play the game. And I just want to tell you from that particular story, sometimes you got to go with what's on the inside. You got to know that God is on the inside and he's pushing you. Can I tell you, like Grandma Nim used to say, they used to say there's something down on the inside telling me to go ahead. And that's all I want to share with you. You got to go with what you know. You got to know that he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. So I want to tell you that when you've had enough, you've got to be exhausted with where you are. When you've had enough, you've got to be determined to start something. When you've had enough, you've got to be willing to accept no as the answer. God bless you. I pray that you've been blessed by the word. Let me share this with you. Maybe there's somebody out there who's uh, watching online and you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins. Let me, let me help you. I want to lead you to Christ right now. If you're there, the Bible says to us that if we confess with our mouth, believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. So if you're out there, repeat this quick prayer after me. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I pray that you would forgive me for my sins. I accept that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, and I believe that he died, that he was risen from the dead, and that he's seated on your right hand. If you repeated that after me, the Bible says that you are saved. God bless you. Thank you for joining the House of Refuge Church virtual broadcast. We love you. Share this with somebody. Like this on Facebook. Do whatever you have to do to get the word out. We love you. God bless you. See you next time.